Welcome back to Aurora Tech Channel. Today, I will review this Pergear L5 laser engraver. This machine is an entry-level desktop engraver that costs just under $300. The maximum working area of this machine is 410 by 400 millimeters. It also came with a 5 watt laser module. I would like to thank Pergear for sending me this machine to review. From their website, I can tell that this is a pretty standard desktop engraver. The assembly process should be pretty easy, so I'll just go through that real quick, do some tests, see how this machine works, and talk about what I think about it. Let's open up the box and see what's inside. We only have a few parts. We have four aluminum extrusions to form the frame, a slightly taller gantry, three legs, and one electronic enclosure to support the machine, the 5 watt laser module, the power supply, and some tools. First, use these four aluminum extrusions to form the frame, insert two screws at each corner, and tighten them. Next, we will grab the gantry, three legs, the electronic enclosure, and the step two screw bag. The legs are needed to be installed at these three corners, and the enclosure will be installed at the rear left corner. Let's slide the gantry on the frame from the front, and then use two screws to mount each leg and the enclosure. One thing I noticed is that the gantry is wobbling and needs to be tightened. Flip it over and make sure the wheels don't spin alone. Tighten the eccentric nut and the gantry should move together when you turn the wheels. Do the same to the other side. Now, the gantry is smooth and stiff and when I try to shake it, I'm the one who is wobbling and not the gantry. Then, grab the step 3 bag and install the belt. I will start with the right side. The belt should go under the first rubber wheel, go over the timing wheel with teeth, and finally, go under the other rubber wheel. Use a T-nut to secure the belt. I will just leave a few millimeters at the front for a better appearance. Insert another set of T-nuts and secure the belt at the back. Try to pull it tight, and I will just leave the long tail at the back. Do the same to the other side. The gantry is moving smoothly, and the belt tension should be good. The manual suggests cutting the belt and using four end caps to cover the extrusions. Since I may need to adjust the belt again if anything goes wrong, I will just leave the caps and decide whether I should cut the belt or just leave it like that later. Next, grab the laser module and the Step 4 bag. There are three pieces of red acrylic. The large one is at the front, and I will finger tighten the laser module on the gantry first. Then, insert two side protectors. After that, tighten the laser module completely. The height of this module is adjusted by two screws on the plate. I will tighten it first, and we still need to adjust it according to the thickness of different engraving materials. After that, we will install the Y-axis stopper. Inside the Step 5 bag, there's only one spacer and one screw. Secure it at the front left of the machine. Since this machine has no limit switch, the stopper is used to limit the travel of the gantry, so the gantry will be stopped by this spacer to keep the laser module from bumping into the frame. Okay, we can connect the cables. There are only three cables from the electronic enclosure, the Y-stepper motor cable, the X-stepper cable, and the laser module cable. Finally, connect the power adapter and the USB cable to your computer to control the machine. Now, I will show you my new setup for desktop engravers. As usual, I will put a half inch thick wood underneath to protect my table. I will use an engraver tent as an enclosure as I don't want the smoke to come out while engraving. During the summer, I can just open the garage door and use a box fan to work as an exhaust fan. But during the winter, this tent is really useful to keep my garage warm. I added two LED lights inside and used an 120mm fan to exhaust the smoke through this 4-inch ducting. 
the whole setup is less than $100, and if you want to make something like this, I will put all links under the description, including the files for 3D printing the fan adapter. Okay, let's go to the computer and do some tests. I will start by using the free laser gerbil software. After you download and install the software, turn on the machine, and you will see a new COM port. As this machine has no limit switches, we can just use these buttons to position the machine to the bottom left corner. Then, select the Earth globe icon to set the zero position. This will be the home position. When you move the module away and press the home button, it will go back to the same position. This is the only difference between machines with and without limit switches. I will move the laser module to the center and start some engraving. Let's start with engraving a photo on one of the sample plywood. Generally, we use line-to-line -line tracing and dithering for photo engraving. I will try line-to-line -line tracing first. Press next and set the speed and laser power. I will try 3000 millimeters per minute, use dynamic power, and use 100% maximum power. For the size, since it's not easy to position a small piece of plywood, I will make the engraving area a little larger than the wood so we can make a borderless photo. Press create and the G-code will be ready in a few seconds. Press the frame button to do a preview and it seems it's just slightly larger than the material. I will just send the job and see how it looks. The result seems okay. Normally, this line-to-line -line tracing is better for high contrast photos. I will keep the same settings and use dithering mode to see how it looks. Okay, here are the results. Next, I will switch to light burn and continue. I will engrave this eagle and use the same 3000 mm per minute feed rate and 100% power. Let's do a preview. It looks fine and I will send this job to the machine. It seems the wood has been burned a little bit dark, and the edges are not as clean as I expected. I guess I can try to speed it up to 5000 mm per minute and see if we can get a better result. It looks like 5000 mm per minute is the sweet spot for engraving on plywood for this machine. After that, I will do some cutting tests starting with this 2mm plywood. I created a file to cut out a 20 by 20mm square at different speeds, from 500mm per minute to 100. The preview looks fine and I will send this job to the machine. Starting from 200 mm per minute, the wood can be cut through completely. In this case, I will try to cut a photo stand out of the sample plywood. Since this shape contains some small details, I will use 150 mm per minute to make sure these tiny corners can be cut out. Since this stand is almost as large as the sample plywood, unlike making the borderless photo, I will do a preview to make sure everything is inside the material before I send out the job. It did burn this area too dark, but the photo stand still doesn't look too bad and is usable. Next, I will try to cut something thicker. 
I will do some cutting tests on this 1 4 inch solid wood board. I will cut out some squares, but starting from 75 millimeters per minute up to 200 millimeters per minute, as I don't think a 5 watt laser module can cut this thick in one pass unless you make it really slow. As expected, it didn't cut through with a single pass, even when the speed was slowed down to 75 millimeters per minute. So we will try again with two passes. The only square that can be cut successfully is the 75 millimeters per minute with two passes. I will try to do three passes and see if we can cut with a higher feed rate to improve the edges, as I think the edges still look a little bit dark. We can actually cut at 100 millimeters per minute for three passes, but I can't see any improvements on the edges, so I would stick with 75 and two passes on this material. Next, I will show you my favorite tool to generate a round logo. I use this free tool from suncatcherstudio.com. I like their text in circle generator. You can just type what you need in this text box, click update text, and you will see how easy it is to make a round logo. Okay, it looks fine to me. I will just save this image as SVG and drag it to Lightburn. I have a piece of leftover plywood that can fit around 300 by 300 millimeters. So I will make the logo at this size, do a preview, and send the job to the machine. However, there is a problem because the letter N has vanished, so our names are now Helios and Aurora Lu G. Despite the letter N being missing, this logo is actually pretty nice. I tried to find out why this happened, and it seems that it was always missing even when I was doing a preview. Let's try to duplicate the letter N a few times. Do the preview again, and it still does not show any letter N. That is really strange. I would say the SVG file should be fine, as we can see the letters on the screen. I regenerated the SVG with another font type, and this time, Lightburn can show up normally. I don't know how to explain this, so if anyone has any ideas, leaving a comment down below would be very appreciated. Anyways, I can finally make a nice logo with this regenerated SVG file. Everything was very nice, and only the lower part was burned a little bit. Finally, I will try to cut out some letters from one of these samples of 2.5mm acrylic. Normally when laser cutting acrylic, the smoke smells really bad, but it seems my cheap laser tent setup works really well. You may not be able to see this on the camera, but I saw all the smoke go out to the duct, and I can't smell anything during the whole process. The acrylic is also cut pretty clean, and I am happy with the result. Okay. After all of these tests, let's talk about what I like about this machine. It has a taller gantry compared to most other desktop diode laser engravers, which means you can fit thicker material without lifting the machine with wood blocks or any sort of DIY legs. The electronic enclosure is at the back. Not letting the cable go around the machine is a little safer in my opinion. The assembly is really simple, and I like how they label the screws and separate them into different steps. There is not much you can go wrong with during the assembly. As there are no limit switches, which is supposed to be a con, I really don't see any inconveniences caused by that, as I normally need to jog the machine manually to the starting position according to the size of the material and then reset the origin, so that didn't make any difference to me. If there's anything I want this machine to improve on, it would be the way it adjusts the height of the laser module, as it uses two screws. That means you need to have the hex wrench or driver around the machine, and I think using thumb screws or a knob could also get the job done and should be more convenient. As most 5 watt laser modules are not too impressive for cutting, this machine also came with a 5 watt laser, and the cutting result is just alright and is in line with all other 5 watt laser modules. But 
you could definitely get better results with a 10 watt or even a 5 watt laser module with Air Assist. In conclusion, I would say this is still a solid entry level desktop laser engraver with a larger working area and a low price tag. If you're interested in getting this as your first laser engraver, I left the link down below as well as my $100 desktop laser engraver setup including the tent, LED lights, exhaust fan, ducting, as well as the 3D printed parts for the fan duct adapter. That's it for this video. If you like this video, please hit the like and subscribe button. My brother and I make a new video every weekend, so check out my channel on Mondays and you'll see something new. See you next week.